My name is Chloe Sellers. Today's date is Wednesday, September 12th, 2018. We'd like to welcome you to WGMS. Channel 23, home of the Good News for Wildcats. We're here to inform you on the upcoming events at our school. And now to the weather with Hi, my name is Chase Pierce and I'm here with your weather. Today it is currently 81 degrees and cloudy. Hey, my name is Brody Perry and I would look I would like to wish a happy birthday to Bradley Parker. Happy birthday. Hi, my name is Jackson Moore. And today for lunch we are having chicken pita, chips, and corn. On the pasta bar we are having cheese quesadilla. On the grab and go bar we are having turkey and veggie wrap. Good morning, GMS. My name is Ellie Bell and I'm here with your announcements. Yearbooks go on sale on Tuesday, September 4th. Yearbooks cost $27. You can have your yearbook personalized for an additional $5. FCA t-shirts are on sale for $12. Apple Race to Education, Saturday, September 15th at Gunnersville Rec Center. Register online at www.ridesignup.com. Last cut for Anchor Club fees by Wednesday, September 12th. Hi, I'm Angela McCulley and I'm here with your sports. On September 15th, there's a Fairview Invitational for Cross Country. And on September 18th, there's a football game, 7th and 8th grade versus Fort Payne, home 5 and 6. Volleyball, there is a game September 13th in Arab against Arab and, against Arab and Averville at 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock. And on September 14th and 15th, there's a volleyball tournament at Simmons Middle School in Birmingham, Alabama. Cheerleaders, please send payments if you haven't already. Balances are due in full by October 1st. Golf. Fall evaluations for 2019 boys golf team will be held at Gunners Landing September 11th and 13th from 4 o'clock to 6.30 p.m. September 11th, 2001. A day of grief. A day of courage. This is how that day unfolded. My daughter called me. She said, uh, a plane just flew into the World Trade Center. I said, no, nah, you gotta be kidding. Me. It's gotta be a pipe, a cub, or some clown was flying down the river. At 8.46 a.m., American Airlines Flight 11 from Boston, with 92 aboard, traveling at a speed of 470 miles per hour, strikes the North Tower of the World Trade Center complex. Within minutes, officials coordinate the citywide emergency response. Their base of operations is a state-of-the-art command center located on the 23rd floor of 7 World Trade Center. With one tower in flames, the tragedy is only beginning. It is 9.03 when United Airlines Flight 175, with 65 aboard, traveling at the speed of 590 miles per hour, smashes into the south tower of the World Trade Center. This aircraft strikes the corner of the South Tower. It rips a diagonally shaped gash from the 84th to the 78th floors. The South Tower lasts only 56 minutes before it succumbs at 9.59 a.m. A dust cloud billows outward for blocks. Victims stagger away. At 10.28, the television mast atop the North Tower spears straight down. Once the collapse started, there really wasn't any way to stop it. It was just going to go all the way down once it got started. Chaos in New York City. Power is down in Lower Manhattan. Phone lines jammed with more than 230 million calls. Hundreds of firefighters trapped in the towers. Hundreds more race to the sea. Falling debris from the collapse of the North and South Towers 
ignites fires in the neighboring buildings of the World Trade Center. World Trade 4, 5, and 6 are ablaze. World Trade 7, the building housing the city's command center, burns unchecked for seven hours. At 5.20, it collapses. The city's emergency nerve center is destroyed. Somewhere in that time, and it's very hard to keep track of time during this, they had been ordered to evacuate number seven by the Port Authority. To this day, we don't know who gave that order, but whoever it was saved a lot of people's lives. With New York a war zone, some residents walk across the Brooklyn Bridge to get out of the city. Others seek escape in vessels piloted by the Army Corps of Engineers. At 7.45 p.m., the New York Police Department says 78 officers are missing and estimates that 200 firefighters are dead. At 10.56 p.m., police officials say they believe there are victims alive in the rubble of the World Trade Center. Working with urban search and rescue teams, there was a lot of areas to be searched underneath the debris field. There were voids that had to be searched for possible live people. September 11, 2001, the longest and most tragic day in New York's history is drawing to a close. Thanks for watching.